سنتي ما قال النبي هو الصحيح نكاء مبارك نكاء مبارك زواج مبارك النكاء من سنتي ما قال النبي هو الصحيح نكاء مبارك Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome, brothers and sisters, to another episode in the series Marriage and Divorce. With myself is Sheikh Haitham Al Haddad, who is currently residing in the UK and is on the Sharia Council of Britain. He's also the founding member of the website www.islam21c.com. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi. We concluded the last episode talking about the different conditions that one can put in the nikah. And we specifically spoke about the delegation of divorce and also the full option of divorce that can be given to the wife-to-be. We also talked about the equality side of it. Do you have anything to that in terms of what Islam says compared to what the West says? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. Inshallah, part of this series is to discuss the system of divorce in Islam. Inshallah, in the coming few episodes. But as we are discussing talaq al that um, delegating the power to end the marriage to the wife, we need to say that Allah Jalla wa Ala, as we said previously, has given the right of divorce to the husband. And he did not give the right of divorce to the wife. The wife can ask for a divorce. The wife can ask for a dissolution of the marriage through the court. But she cannot run away from the marriage like this. Now, I know that some people will say that there is no equality here, and there is no equality here. And they say, well, it won't be fair that the man can say to his wife, you are divorced, but the wife cannot say to her husband, you are divorced. She cannot say this. So why is this? See. Either, now, there is a partnership between both. The marriage is partnership, is a form of partnership, not is a full partnership. And they are leading a boat, sailing in the sea. Do we have two captains or one? One. One. You Can a one. boat sail with two captains? No, they no. go in different directions. In fact, there are some many statements about boat sailing with two captains. Yeah, even in English, it cannot. So there has to be one what, one captain. The marriage is sort of partnership to sail in the sea of this life, and the boat is the family. It has to have one captain. If we make the wife as the captain, later on men will say, why not we? Okay? If we give it to the man, then women will say, why not we? Yeah? Why not we given the right, okay, or the captainship? So it has to be given to one. This is one thing. We will discuss this more when we discuss the issue of marriage and divorce. But this is an introduction to it, a good introduction to it. The other thing is, if the Sharia wants to minimize divorce and marriage break down, now if Sharia gave it to both, it means that the rate of divorce or the possibility of divorce will be increased because I can divorce my wife and she can divorce me, then now the possibility is twice. If the right to divorce was given to the wife, not me, again, men will say why we were not given the right to divorce. So it was given to men. Not only this, not arbitrary, Allah Jalla wa ala knows that men are more qualified to divorce at the right stage. Now, I know that some women will jump and will say, well, so many men are foolish. Yes, we know that so many men can rush into divorce, can end the marriage, can, can, can. Yes? Exceptions again. But again, exceptions. Now, does this mean that we are treating men and women differently? Yes, 
we are treating men and women differently. Now, as we said, Western people, because of their background, whenever you mention that they're treating men and women differently, they jump to the conclusion of what? Discrimination. No treating men and women differently, it is distinction between men and women. Giving women their rights and giving men their rights. Even, ya akhi, subhanallah, you know, in Britain, I think in most Western countries, the insurance for men is different from the insurance of women. But this is fine. Why? Because they say the rate of accidents with women is less than the rate of accidents with men or vice versa. I don't know what they say exactly. Why is this? It is because of the gender. So what is the notion of equality? Okay, why is this? They are different. Because Allah Jalla wa ala created men with certain qualities and created women with certain qualities. Women are more qualified to do certain things. Men are more qualified to do other things. Nowadays, they say why we don't have enough women in the position of leadership. Yeah? True. Why do we need to do that? Why? Why? Because they are equal. Okay, then we should ask why men, why men don't have enough positions of motherhood. They say, what are you talking about? This is a joke. This is a joke. These are physiological differences. I agree. This is what I'm talking about. If we are talking about physical differences, yeah, psychological differences, physiological differences, yes, then those differences have impact on the nature of both men and women. And it is injustice to deal with two different peoples. The same way. The same way. I think we mentioned this. If I have two guests and I offered both of them, for example, fizzy drinks. But this is unjust to one who doesn't drink fizzy drinks. Agree? Agree. So if this is the philosophy of equality. Now, if I want to treat them equally, treating them equally doesn't mean that I give them the same thing. No, I give them what they want. Not what you want. It is not what I want. So I'm not forcing myself on them. I am giving them, if I want to be equal to them, yeah, I am giving them what they want, provided that there is no huge difference between both. Okay? And by the way, if I nourish my children like this and the whole society like this, men will not be jealous of women and women will not be jealous of men. And this is what Allah Jalla wa'ala says. Allah Jalla wa'ala summarized the whole notion of equality between men and women or distinction between men and women in one simple verse. وَلَا تَتَمَنَّوْ مَا فَضَّلَ اللَّهُ بِهِ بَعْضَكُمْ عَلَى بَعْضٍ لِلْرِجَالِ نَصِيبٌ مِّنْ مَكْتَسَبُ وَلِلْنِسَاءِ نَصِيبٌ مِّنْ مَكْتَسَبُ وَسَعَلُوا اللَّهِ مِنْ فَضْلٍ Don't wish what Allah favored one party over the other. For men their shares and for women their shares. Yeah. Ask Allah Jalla Ala of his favors. Don't wish what Allah favored one over the other. Allah favored women, okay, by having children. I cannot conceive. Do I say, wow, wow, I wish if I become pregnant. Now, I am sure people will laugh. Will say, well, what, this man is mad. He wished to become pregnant. Agree? But for a woman, it is part of her femininity to become pregnant. If she doesn't become pregnant, she will become angry. Now the child goes to his mother and he says, Mom, he doesn't go to his mother and says, Dad. He comes to me and says, Dad. Okay? Allah, the creator, gave the mother three rights over me as a father. Is that true or not? Mm. All of us know the hadith. Hadith Abi Huraira, a man came to the Prophet and he said, who is the most deserving of my kind? 
who is the person who deserves most of my kindness. The Prophet ﷺ said, your mother. Then he said, and then who, Ya Rasulullah? The Prophet ﷺ said, your mother. Then who, Ya Rasulullah? The third time, the Prophet ﷺ said, your mother. In the fourth time, the Prophet ﷺ said, your father. Now, me as a father, I say, well, That's this is fair. unfair. This is unfair. I wish to be the person with three right. No. Khalas. No jealousy. No jealousy. You have your role. My wife has her role in the society. I have my role in the society. I don't look down to her. She doesn't look down to me. Now, if we have the notion of jealousy, then whenever I do something she doesn't do, then it means that I'm looking down at her. Yeah? Who said so? Mm. Okay. okay. Who said so? And the issue of looking up and down, it is not there. Khalas, you have your role, I have my role. We complement each other rather than we compete with each other. This is the formula. We complement each other. We don't compete with each other. So the notion of equality is not there at all. Mm -hmm. Allah gave me the right to divorce. Now the right of divorce, it doesn't mean, this is the second point when we discuss equality. The right of divorce, does it mean that I am honored? Why don't you consider that it is more responsibility? It is. In fact, it is. Because in many cases, when the husband divorces his wife the first time, the second time, and the third time, and then the marriage is over, I say to the husband, you, it was your fault. He would say, no, 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 it was her fault. I said, see, whatever, whatever happened, ya akhi, whatever happened, who is the one who uttered the divorce? He is the one with, with the decision. He is the one who took the decision. He would say, well, she pushed me. Akhi, who is the man? You. Who should control the situation? You. Well, I, I was pushed. Yes, so it is your fault. Yeah? So who said that any kind of authority, any kind of authority is privilege? Exactly. It's more responsibility. It is more responsibility. And for us, we believe in the day of judgment. We will come and we will be asked. This is the third point. Let us imagine, yeah, that Allah Jalla wa Ala favored men over women. Yeah? In general, from all angles. Yeah? That Allah Jalla wa Ala, let us, let us, let us imagine, hypothetically speak, that Allah Jalla wa Ala loves men more than he loves women. Yeah? The key issue is not loving them in this dunya, even if he loves them more in this dunya, but in the akhirah, Allah Jalla wa Ala admits women to Jannah, and Allah Jalla wa Ala gives them, and Allah Jalla wa Ala makes them happy, and Allah Jalla wa Ala does not make them wish anything except they get it. Mm. So what else they want? What else is more important? What else is more important? If you live 80 years, 100 years, 120 years, yeah? Today I read about it. A scholar who lived for 120 years. Yeah, he died eight years ago. Yeah, in Saudi Arabia. And he was during the time of Ottomans. Okay, 120 years. This is just what a blink of an eye? Less. Less than that in Jannah. So let us not be so much worried about equality. Yeah, as far as you are treated fairly. And the key thing is, you can compete for your akhirah. And the key thing is, read what Allah Jalla wa said about you in Jannah. Will you be satisfied, happy, etc.? You get what you want, of course. Lahum fiha ma yasha'un. Lahum, both, lahum, for everyone in Jannah. Whatever they want. Khalidin. Yeah? La yamassum fiha nasab. They will have no grief, no difficulty, no, no, no tiredness. And they will be fully satisfied. That's it. Finish off. Finish. Of the discussion. And, everyone should, of the and we should be grateful for this. And we should be grateful for this. For the stop. Brothers and sisters, please return to us after the break where we shall continue.
to look at this issue of equality, especially as we are talking about various conditions which should be mutually agreed upon that will be put into the nikah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs>Welcome brothers and sisters to the continuation of the discussion on equality regarding the conditions that we are talking about that could be mutually agreed upon in the nikah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa We ended the episode talking about equality and we mentioned how the main point about equality is in the akhirah we will be judged and we at the end of the day going to the same jannah. Yes. So what is more important than this? That is the key. That is the summary of it. And that's why we always say to our brothers and sisters, don't over justify things. Don't over justify things. See, the non-Muslims, they don't believe in the akhirah as we believe in it. Even if they believe in the akhirah, they don't live for their akhirah. We live for our akhirah. The key thing is our akhirah. Yeah? I think for us as Muslims, forget the Muslims for a minute, as Muslims, how can we question equality because this has come from Allah? How can we start to question his judgment, his guidance, his orders? Yes, his formula. As if we are saying, Ya Allah, your formula is not accepted. The accepted formula is equality. And from the other angle, we have proven that equality is injustice unless you do it the right way. The right way is our way. How? To treat different people based on their needs. This person eats this food, give it to him. The other person doesn't eat this food. See, even when it comes to marrying different wives. Yeah, a person married two wives. Sharia said, deal with them what? Huh? Bil adil. Justly. Justly. Yeah? Some scholars use the word equally, but they mean justly. What is our formula of equality? The most advanced formula our formula as Muslims. What is it? It says, this wife, she likes to eat chicken. Give her chicken. The other wife doesn't like to eat chicken. She likes to eat fish. Give her fish. No, I have to give her chicken because she has to be equal to the second one. What is she going to say? Not fair. It's not fair, why? You are forcing me to eat what the other wife like. Why don't you force the other wife to eat what I like? Is it clear? So what will be fair? Treating them to the... You like to want. eat fish. You like to eat chicken. Give this chicken, give this fish. Finish. That's it. But don't 
provide this with fish every day and provide this with chicken one day and the others you just give her peanuts or nothing and then you say that this is equality. No. Yeah. So the form of equality, the philosophy of equality, our philosophy means fairness and equality from their perspective rather than from the person's perspective forcing his understanding of equality on different entities. Okay, so this is the issue of the notion of equality. Of course, we need to discuss it further because there might be some other issues yeah, regarding uh, equality during the marriage. Again, if we are talking about equality, I just remembered now. Now, the man in Islam, the man gives the wife mahr. Yeah, mahr, dowry. We discussed it. We forgot to say, why don't the women give men mahar as well? Not fair. What does that mean? It means that it is what? Not equal. It is not equal. But men feel empowered and feel happy. Agree? Agree. We feel happy that we are giving because this is our nature. Women feel very happy that they have been honored. Is that true or not? Especially by the one they will marry. By the one who they are going to marry. Yeah, uh, common sense. Okay. Even now when yani, a boyfriend and the girlfriend, they go yeah, to eat something. The lady normally likes if he pays for her. You came from a non-Islamic background. I know you did not spend a long time being non-Muslim. But being yani, indigenous British person. Is that true or not? I think generally it's always the case where the, the male, the boyfriend, the, the man, whatever you want to call it, is the one that... Who offers. Exactly. Who pays for her. Yeah? And women, they, they feel, well, he pays for me. You know, he likes me, he honors me, he... Yeah? Now, wives, they like to be given gifts by their husbands. Of course, I like to be given a gift by my wife, but generally speaking, who likes to receive more gifts? The wife. The wife. Yeah? He's honoring me. He's giving me. He's providing for me. Okay? And when it comes to the issue of maintenance, inshallah, who should maintain the other side? Husband should maintain the wife. Husband should maintain the wife. It is not fair, Sheikh. We will continue about this issue of not fair, not fair, not fair, and we will just leave everything in order just to convince people that equality is not the best scenario. Come on, this is too much, Wallahi. This is waste of time. My dear brothers and sisters, Wallahi, there is nothing that is better than the Islamic ethos, values, principles, because they came from your Creator. Is there anything you want to introduce possibly for the next episode or conclude on? So we spoke about talaq al tafwil and again I won't like my brothers and sisters to differentiate between talaq al tafwil yes, the two scenarios of talaq al tafwil Okay? Now, by the way, if there are some brothers who work for Sharia councils in Britain or they introduce Sharia councils in different countries, if they receive, if they receive a marriage certificate where the wife was given talaq al tafwil Yeah? How should they treat this? Mm. Yeah? And the wife divorced herself based on that, based on talaq al tafwil Based on the husband delegating the authority of divorce? Yes. Or the option of divorce yes. to the wife? Yes. You are right. Jazakallah khair. Not talaq al tafwil as the second scenario of talaq al tafwil No, where the husband delegated the right of divorce to his wife. Most of the classical scholars said that has no value. Mm -hmm. Yeah? And therefore her talaq based on this is not a talaq. This is a classically. Now, how to treat this? Bearing in mind that some countries, some Muslim countries are introducing this or they made it as a standard. Now this needs a discussion. Okay? And maybe it needs a careful consideration and a discussion by a group of scholars based on the context and number of other factors 
But generally speaking, for me, myself, I consider it as nothing. It has no value because Sharia has not approved such thing. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh. Unfortunately, we've run out of time, but we'll come back to it in the next episode, maybe. Inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Brothers and sisters, we are now concluding this episode, and we are concluding the discussion on the mutually agreed upon conditions that can be included in the nikah. In the next episode, we shall move on to the issue of the walima. What is the walima and what conditions do need to be met in order for that to be valid also? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Nikahun <laughs> <laughs>